This morning is a bit like a roller coaster ride before lunch. So we've traveled from the pancreas to the salivary gland. Now we're going down to the testes this morning. So what I'm going to do is focusing on the testicular tumors and inflammations. And I'm really just going to take it a, um, a, a very simple approach. Just look at the rows of contrast enhanced ultrasound in two areas. One is how it helps us to confirm um, whether lesion is benign or not. And secondly, is to look at the row to see how contrast enhanced ultrasound can help us to further characterize the vascularity of any testicular lesions. And I'm sure we all know and practice ultrasound uh, for testicular scrotal pathologies. And we know that ultrasound is very effective in imaging the scrotum and picking out uh, abnormalities. And often, ultrasound is the only imaging modality before the patient actually go under the surgeon's knife. And traditionally, grayscale ultrasound is, is extremely sensitive in picking up uh, testicular masses, but it doesn't particularly uh, provide sufficient information to allow for further evaluation for potential differential histological diagnosis. When there's uncertainty, the testes gets removed in many cases. So the two areas that we're going to look at are the tumors and the inflammations this morning. And under this area, there are several possibilities here. And in, on the, on the, on the left-hand side where the benign pathology is suspected, the patient may have a conservative management with testicular sparing, a surgery or watchful waiting approach, whereas on the Malignant site, a more likely uh, management path, uh, pathway will be an orchitectomy. And when the ultrasound findings are uncertain or misinterpreted, it may result in unnecessary orchitectomy. The fear of failing to remove a testicular germ cell tumor has histo uh, historically led to radical orchitectomy with traditional practice of, if in doubt, take it out approach by the surgeons. But it's important that we know that majority of the instantly picked up uh, non palpable testicular tumors, they're going to be small and they are more likely going to be benign. So how can we as radiologists prevent unnecessary um, orchitectomy? And I, I think that, that is the role that we have to consider. I think the first thing to look at these are what are the preoperative um, features of these two groups? I think looking at the vascularity is going to be a very promising approach and because virtually all malignant lesions are vascular. So if we just look at the vascularity, we may be able to pick out those malignant lesions. And conveniently, all the benign lesions seem to be avascular. And if we, again, can prove that a lesion is avascular, it may uh, imply this is a benign process. So this will then direct us conveniently to the correct treatment pathway for the patient that we encounter. And traditionally, we have used Doppler, and Doppler have served us uh, in detecting vascularity and distinguishing between hypovascular lesions and avascular lesions. But the difficulty um, we encounter is that um, if the lesion is small, then, then we may not be able to conclusively decide whether the lesion is vascular or not. And we can already see that contrast enhanced ultrasound will have an important role in this, uh, in determining the vascularity. And to this end, the guideline has been published in the potential recommended use and applications in testicular ultrasound imaging. And I think the most uh, fundamental aspect of the guideline and the use of testicular um, ultrasound is to determine whether a uh, testicular lesion um, is vascular or pick out those who show, which shows no enhancement, therefore potentially identify lesions without malignant potentials. So just some examples, if we look at how contrast ultrasound is used in determining vascularity in a, uh, in a lesion where on the BMO ultrasound, there may not be any striking apparent difference between the two uh, testes, one on the left and one on the right, but on the contrast ultrasound, uh, it shows Clearly, there's no vascular flow without any doubt within the right 
uh, testes, confirming a, a global infarction of the right testes. And then I think this case highlights the use of contrast and hands ultrasound in assessment of the vascularity within the testes in the light of any uh, of apparently normal testicular appearances on gray scale ultrasound. <laughs> You, you may say that color Doppler imaging may identify a lack of flow within the testes, but clearly contrast and enhanced ultrasound here in this case shows the distinctive lack of blood flow much more obviously in this case. And the same principle applies to the trauma cases as well. The essential um, use of ultrasound in the setting of blunt scrotal trauma is to establish the need of any operative intervention to salvage the testes or also to indicate the need of an orchidectomy where there's no viable uh, testicular tissue left. And the addition of contrast and hands ultrasound will help us to establish any tissue viability and additional benefit uh, for the surgeons to identify the presence of trauma um, and direct them for any surgical interventional approach. So in this case, this is a young patient who came in with an abnormal abnormal looking upper pole of the uh, right testes, which is enlarged with several areas of low reflectivity at the site of the trauma. And surgical exploration was performed and the tissue of the upper third of the testes appeared dusky and was removed, um, which demonstrates an ischemic area. This area was excised and the remaining testes was preserved according to the preoperative <coughs> contrast ultrasound image, which clearly and demonstrate viable tissues to be, um, to be uh, saved during the operation. And three months later, after the surgery, we can see reperfusion of the entire testes again in the remaining uh, tissues. So this is, again, highlighting contrast also in offering an imaging pathway to allow us to assess the viability or vascularity of uh, testicular tissues. And also, this can apply in a... Um, Chronic cases in uh, post-traumatic hematomas, it's important that when we encounter any hypoechoic lesion in the testes, even with a history of trauma, we have to make sure that this is not an incidental neoplast neoplastic lesion uh, in the testes, and contrast ultrasound can help us to identify the lack of uh, absence of any uh, vascularity within the lesion, which we know is a hallmark of a benign lesion. So coming back to inflammatory process, in uncomplicated cases of orchid, um, epididymal orchitis, advanced ultrasound technology probably offer no significant advantages. But if the inf inflammation is complicated and an abscess is formed, which it can be a common complication of severe uh, epididymal orchitis, then we can as we have already seen the usefulness of contrast and hand ultrasound in delineating the abnormality without um, vascularity. This can be used to help us to, um, first of all, to identify a, um, an area of infarction or abscess formation at the earlier stage. And also it will help us to um, evaluate the size of the abscess and which can again direct us in terms of how this patient is best managed. So here we have two cases here. Uh, the one on the right is a 69-year-old gentleman who came in with um, uh, what looks like an area of uh, venous infarction, and this was confirmed on histological um, confirmation. And contrast also again showed complete absence of enhancement within the lesion with a very smooth, well-delineated regular border and some rim enhancement around the venous infarct. On the left-hand side, we have a different case of an 81-year-old gentleman with a left testicular abscess and his histology <coughs> confirms the abscess formation and ultrasound again showed a vascular area with a slightly irregular border and vascular projections into the, uh, into the abscess and some ring, ring, ring enhancement. The fact that both pathologies are a, um, a vascular, it makes it difficult uh, to differentiate absolutely between venous infarct and abscess in some cases. Um, but again, the lack of um, enhancement confirmed that this is likely going to be a non-malignant process and clinical history correlation usually lead us to the right diagnosis. Another inflammatory process is an acute segmental infarction of the testes. On the grayscale images, um, 
segmental infarction typically appear on ultrasound as a low reflective area, which can be wedge shaped, but <coughs> can be rounded shaped as well. And when they appear as a rounded shape, hypoechoic lesion, the main concern is the differentiation of a segmental infarct to a rounded, um, poorly vascularized tumor. And the inability to differentiate this abnormality to testicular tumor can result in unnecessary orchidectomy. And contrast enhanced ultrasound again um, help us to characterize the uh, segmental infarction, showing the morphological features of a lesion, which can be very different from those of uh, hypovascular tumors. Acute segmental infarcts uh, can present as one or more avascular areas, but these are separated by normal vessels consistent with some ischemic testicular lobules within the infarct. And what's also interesting is that the spectrum of the appearances can differ depending on the timing of our imaging uh, from the onset of the uh, testicular pain. Um, so in the acute phases, acute segmental infarct can present as uh, ischemic lobules we've seen in the previous case, but without a periregional uh, peri enhancement. But in the subsequent subacute phase, the segmental infarct is then characterized by a periregional rim of enhancement, which then on the follow-up would diminish over time and eventually lost with the change of the lesion size and shape. And recognizing these features allowed us um, during the follow-up to confirm the differential diagnosis from other testicular lesions and allow us to uh, take it as a conservative uh, approach with watchful weight. On the other end of the spectrum, we want to look at some focal lesions and see how we can further differentiate them from lesions that require surgical approach. I think the typical lesion, as we say, are the lesions that shows no enhancement. Epidermal cysts are a good example. These are usually lesions which is well-defined and they can have calcified rim and a very heterogeneous uh, echo reflectivity and variable B-mode um, appearances. When they are typical, um, it's probably easy to make the diagnosis and contrast ultrasound will just add further confirmation that these are avascular lesions. But if we, if the BMO appearances are atypical, then contrast enhanced ultrasound will be very useful to confirm that, that these are benign avascular lesions. Compared to this, when we um, see a testicular tumor, these are tumors um, <coughs> which um, Virtually all of these tumors demonstrate internal enhancement, and the enhancement is usually greater than the surrounding uh, parenchyma. And what's also interesting is that these vascularities are, um, are, are different from normal vascularity, that there's lots of normal linear patterns in terms of the uh, vessels within the lesion. And these features, um, are strongly suggestive of a primary testicular malignancy. And the features may be observed on Doppler ultrasounds, but when the lesions are small, contrast enhanced ultrasound will allow us to um, enhancing these features to uh, be able to detect these uh, features with more confidence. And compared to um, the loss of the, um, the feed, the, the pattern of the enhancement is important because it allows us to differentiate the primary testicular tumor to other forms of mal enhancing malignancies. For example, there's increasing recognition that the primary testicular lymphoma enhancing a slightly different pattern to the primary germ cell tumors. So the, on both con uh, color Doppler ultrasound and contrast enhanced ultrasound, primary testicular lymphoma demonstrates a non-branching linear pattern whereas in the seminomas, they demonstrate a pattern where there's a loss of normal linear uh, vascularization with crisscross uh, pattern of vessels within those mm -hmm. lesions. So the difference in the vascular pattern may allow us to um, raise the suspicion of uh, uh, hematological origin of the malignancy. And once the suspicion is made, clinical correlation with the patient's uh, fi uh, laboratory finding and other histories may be useful to help us to establish diagnosis of lymphoma. So, so far everything has worked neatly uh, by using the vascularity to help us to place the patient in the right area of uh, management. 
but there is um, there are uh, some gray areas and area where we need to pay um, further attention to to avoid unnecessary orchidectomy, and this occurs in the area of late cell tumors. These tumors are typically vascular. Um, they are um, they have a very low malignant potential and contrast and hands out sound in this area allows us to further characterize the vascular pattern to allow us to make the correct diagnosis. And as we talked about already in, in a malignant cell tumor, the enhancement pattern in a typical lesion is uh, hypervascular, but it enhances slightly differently from the Leydig cell tumor. So in the seminoma, in the seminomas, uh, these lesions enhance rapidly but the contrast then wash out and loses the hypervascularity, hyper enhancement compared relative to the surrounding parenchyma. Whereas what we have noticed um, increasingly is that these small Leydig cell tumors, uh, one of their distinctive enhancement feature is that they demonstrate vascular pattern that shows rapid enhancement, but enhancement, hyper enhancement to the surrounding parenchyma is long standing and when you're doing these scans, you'll see these lesion lights up for a long time during your uh, enhancement uh, phase on the examination. And these can be demonstrated on um, time intensity curves where there's a larger um, differentiation between these tumors compared to the surrounding parenchyma. And the study has been look at different parameters, look at the peak values and time to peak values, and more importantly, looking at the washout um, uh, pattern of these lesions to demonstrate that there is a differentiation between the enhancement pattern between these two tumors. And our observation has also been uh, observed by other groups which show that when the lesion enhances rapidly and with rapid washout, then these are more likely to be malignantly, <coughs> malignant lesions, where a, whereas a benign vascular lesion features a long washout uh, of microbubbles which is longer lasting. And these are useful features to further characterize a vascular testicular lesions when we see them. Another example of a, um, the ability of contrast and hands out sound to characterize lesion uh, further than uh, conventional Doppler ultrasound is in this interesting case with a rare uh, diagnosis of a capillary hemangioma within the testes. On the color Doppler ultrasound, we can see a very hypervascular lesion in, within the testes. But contrast enhanced ultrasound provided a more detailed imaging of the intratumoral vas vasculature, and it has a very temp uh, high temporal resolution. We can observe these lesions real time, and following admission, uh, administration of microbubble contrast at 28 seconds of um, uh, injection, uh, we see this globular enhancement and gradually filling from the periphery in a pattern similar to hemangiomas that we see in other parts of the body. And uh, this lesion, again, is an example of how contrast enhanced ultrasound is superior and provides more additional information in vascular uh, characterization. So how, do, how does contrast ultrasound help us in the real world? I think there are further advanced technologies that allow us to uh, gather further information and combined with other technologies such as uh, strain elastography, you'll help us to further characterize, the, further characterize the lesion before a management decision is made. So a complete preoperative assessment should include um, all uh, modalities of ultrasound that will provide uh, further information. This also implies that no single modality is probably uh, sufficient in provide, providing a definite uh, diagnosis for uh, uh, focal testicular lesions. And these technologies are complementary to each other. And when, when we have a, a increased certainty preoperatively, what we can do is change our management with uh, testicular focal lesions, and we may be able to uh, select patients more accurately for uh, testicular spare surgery, which may be guided by ultrasound if necessary, because these lesions can be very small and difficult to detect intraoperatively. So in summary, I'll 
just like to say that the role of contrast sound in confirming benignity is that it can conclusively demonstrate a lack of vascularity um, to confirm a lesion is benign in the real world and it's very striking and distinctive. And it also um, helps us to further characterize any vascularized lesion and these uh, differ differing um, enhancement pattern and characteristics, characteristics may further allow, um, increase our ability to select patients for testicular spare surgeries. Thank you very much.